Louisiana and all that stuff is sometimes why we get get a lot of the rain too here. But yeah, really quick tonight, I want to talk about distractions and the title of my scope was, Are You Distracted and Doing Nothing? Uh, are you majoring on minor things? Are you majoring on minor things is what we're going to be talking about. And so I kind of looked up, kind of, this is my journal. Y'all know my journal. Uh, and I talked, I kind of read about Mary and Martha, the two sisters, uh, and that is in Luke 10, uh, what is that, Luke 10, 38, yeah, like 38 through 41, and of course, we're not going to read all of that, so if you are able to go through after that, hold on, y'all, uh, Luke 10, chapter 10, 38 through 40, what did I just say, 41, I forget, and I read this story all the time, 38 through 41, and it's talking about, yes, yeah, she was very distracted, and so, um, that's what I want to talk about, and it wasn't that, and that's the crazy thing, it wasn't that what she was doing when this was necessarily a bad thing, but a lot of times we, it was kind of the motive behind what she was doing, um, and it was that her priorities were out of order, and so Mary and Martha were uh, two sisters, two sisters, and they had very, very, very different personalities. Uh, Martha was a doer, so to speak. Martha was a doer, but Mary was a seeker. Martha was a doer, and Mary was a seeker. And so they were, uh, in, in the scripture, it talks about Martha was distracted. Some some versions of, of that particular text say Martha was distracted with much serving. And so when we hear the word serving, it automatically brings somewhat, or for me anyway, brings a good connotation to mind, it, something good, because it says, okay, she was serving but then you have the you have the contradiction that she was distracted with all of the serving that she was trying to do so it makes you question where was her serving flowing from i know for me a lot of things uh that one of one of the ways that i feel affirmed or kind of like one of my love languages to feel affirmed is to feel needed so and that's not a bad thing but a lot of times it leads me to overdo it or to overcommit myself to different things because that's the way that I feel affirmed. That's the way that I feel love. And that's the way that I show love or that I care about you is to help you or to be try to be resourceful. But a lot of times it's the perfect way to overcommit if you're not careful. And so a lot of times they say your strengths can become a, a weakness if you overuse them. And so here again, we see Martha was distracted with much serving and Mary was serving also, but they just chose two different masters. I'm going to say that again. Mary and Martha were both serving. They just had two different masters. And so one of the things that I wrote here in my journal uh, was talking about the difference between a slave and a servant. So when you have a slave and you have a servant, a slave is somebody that is bound to their master against their own personal will. A slave is somebody that is bound to their master against their own personal will. But a servant, you choose who you bind yourself to. A servant chooses who they bind themselves to. So both again, both of the sisters were serving but they just chose different masters for different reasons so um martha had placed a higher priority on the type of serving that she was doing but she did not realize that she had neglected the the priority she did not realize she had neglected the priority all the things that she was trying to do for jesus all these things she was trying to do for jesus and but she was not spending any time with Jesus. I'm going to say that again. And hopefully you'll catch it. She was doing these things for Jesus. Hey, Ashley, how are you, hon? Uh, she was doing these things for Jesus, but she was not spending time with Jesus. And that's what I want to ask you. That's my question tonight is, are you so busy doing, doing things for Jesus that you are not spending any time with Jesus? Are you so busy doing things for Jesus 
that you are not spending any time with Jesus. A lot of times that's why we are stressed. A lot of times we are feeling like our works and, and, and faith without works is dead. Of course, we know that. But it is not our works. It is not our works that get us in with Jesus. We are not saved by our works, how much stuff we can do. A lot of times, even at church, we overcommit. Uh, we get on every committee. We, we're we at every service. We're at everything that has to go on. We feel like that's what we have to do. Uh, and we have to check ourselves as far as if we find ourselves overcommitted and we find ourselves stressed and we find ourselves overwhelmed, where is it coming from? And like I posted today, and if you have the Emerge Online Devotional app, that was today's um, quote. There is always enough time if you spend it the right way. Some of us are always saying, well, there's not enough time in the day. I just need an, an extra 12 hours in a 24-hour day. No, you don't. You just need to make better use out of the time that you already have. So if you find yourself overwhelmed, the first thing that I say to do is look within yourself and see why. Because it's not that everybody's asking you. It, it, and everybody could be asking you, but you have the choice to tell them no. You have the choice to tell them no. And so if, if you feel like you are not able to say no, why? Why? Are you trying to be a people pleaser? Are you trying to make look like a superhero? Are you afraid of people are you afraid that if you don't say yes then there may be some repercussion or that a person won't love you if you don't say yes you got to really check yourself if you struggle with saying no to every request for your time why so i want y'all to to evaluate that and so we're talking about if you're just getting on we're talking about Martha and Mary, the two sisters, they were actually, they were very good friends of Jesus. They lived in Bethany. And so Jesus had actually, I think like three or four times that we know of, had actually visited these sisters. They were Lazarus's sister, sisters. And so there are like three or four times that we know of that Jesus actually visited them. And this was one of the particular times that Jesus was coming to visit. And Martha was just all over the place with doing the wrong thing. And so again, like I said, they both were serving, but they were serving two different masters. So if you find it hard to say no, and that's another thing that I posted today. Do not say yes or maybe or I'll think about it when you really want to say no. Do not, I'm going to say that again. Do not say yes. Do not say maybe. Do not say give me some time to think about it when you really know you want to say no. When you really know you already have enough to do, when you really know that it is not your assignment, when you really know that doing that is going to take away from the time that you need to focus on what you really got to get done, do not say yes, do not say maybe, do not say give me some time to think about it when you already know the answer is no. Do not do that. Because, yes, it is hard to say no to people because a lot of times you don't want to let people down. Or you may feel like they really need it. But this is the thing. If what that person is requesting from you or that, that thing uh, that they're going to you know need to get done, if it's something that God is in agreement with and if it's in the will of God for them to do it, he is going to send somebody to, to help them to do that. Uh, but it doesn't always have to be you. It doesn't have to be you. So I want you guys to make it a priority to start saying no, right? Just saying, you know what, I, I wish I could do that, but you know what? I'm, you don't even have to really give people a detailed explanation. Just let them know you're not able to do that at this time, um, you know, period. Or you could even be helpful. You know, you're not able to do it, but you may want to ask so-and-so. That's more of their area. That's more of something that they could handle. Even stuff like that. I think I have a blog post. Yeah, I do have a blog post on my um on my website about how to say no it's I don't even remember what the name of it is I wrote it a while back but I may share it uh, later on but how to say no so even be helpful or you know again if, if you feel like maybe later you could do it and you honestly know uh, sure I'll share I'll try to see if I can share it via email if you're on my email list I'll try to send it out tomorrow um, but it, yeah it gives actually gives some different ways to say no to people um, so I'll probably share that in an email. So if you're not on my email list, um, you can hop on that by going to my website, um, 
how do I get on list? Um, let me see. Let me see the best way to get on the list. Uh, the best way to get on that that particular list, if you don't, if you're not signed up for 30 day business school, is um, you can go to. Let me hold on, y'all. Let me get the link real quick. Let me look up the link real quick, and then I'll I'll um, share how to get on that list. What you can. Um, Hold on, give me one second. Okay, yeah, that's how you do it, guys. So you can type in uh, or write this down if you have something to write with so you don't have to get off the Periscope right now. But it is bit, bit, B I T, B as in boy, I as in ice cream, T as in Tom, dot L Y. So bit.ly, B I T dot L Y forward slash periscope prayer challenge bit dot lee forward slash periscope prayer challenge and it will take you to my email list where you will be able to yeah bit dot yeah absolutely emily periscope prayer challenge and it will take you to a list where i mean a to a form where you can enter your name and email you will have to confirm that you want to be added to the list you have to confirm that you want to be added to the list, and you will actually get my free ebook as well. That's like full of all sorts of inspiration and all that stuff. You'll get that just for signing up for the list. So absolutely, guys, yeah, sign up, and I'll send that out. Um, I'll send that out tomorrow morning, more than likely, if I can't get it uh, scheduled tonight. But you gotta say no, and if you find yourself struggling with saying no, like. You got to evaluate why. Why is it so hard for me to tell people no? Like, why is that a struggle for me? Like, it's not just a struggle just because it's a struggle, but there is a reason that it's a struggle for you. Are you afraid that people will reject you if you don't say yes to every request? Um, you know, so we got to figure out why we are overwhelmed because there's a reason. And um, thank you. Thank you. Um, there's a reason. So, you know, we got to be for real with ourselves. And I'm really big on personal development and getting better and being better, whether that's in my spiritual life, in my personal life as an entrepreneur, whatever it is. But the only way that you can actually get better is to see the areas that you need improvement on and to be honest with yourself and be intentional about making changes. And even if you got to do it day by day, hour by hour, if you catch yourself in one of those moments, you got to really, sometimes you got to talk to yourself and be like, no, 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 we're not doing that today. We're, we're making changes. And I'm telling you, once you, everything that you consistently do, you will start, it will start becoming a, a habit for you and it will start becoming natural to you, uh, too. And it'll start changing those, what were natural tendencies, it will start changing over to the things that benefit you and serve you, the behaviors that will serve you. Um, so I want you guys to do that. And so, uh, because a lot of times your service, your so-called service becomes self-serving. Your service becomes self-serving because it gratifies a need within us. Remember what I said earlier? A lot of times I will overdo it or try to help everybody or try to do different things because it makes me feel good. It makes me, you know, a lot of times we don't, I know we don't want to admit it and I know it's nobody on this Periscope broadcast, but you know, we want to feel needed. We want to feel like the hero. We want to feel like superheroes. And that's why a lot of times we wear that busyness. That so-called busyness, when I'm helping this person, doing that, doing that, doing that, oh, look at me go. We wear that busyness like a badge of honor. We wear that busyness like a badge of honor, y'all. And y'all know we do it, especially as women. I don't know if there are any men on here or not. But I know as women, we wear busyness like a badge of honor. I remember there was a time in my life when I was proud that my schedule was so full Um you know, my schedule was so full that I just couldn't fit anything in. You know, I just love to tell people that, you know, oh, I got something to do. Uh, you know, this, oh, I'm busy that day. I'm booked solid. I'm booked, you know, two weeks out. That's not cute. That is not cute that you have zero margin in your life. And that's why when life happens, 
to you, you lose your head because you have no wiggle room. You have no margin for unexpected incidentals to occur in your life. Whatever you are planning, I don't care what you got going on. You always have to leave some margin in your day for life to happen. Or just to decompress or to do some mindless activity or to just relax or to take a nap. Nothing is wrong with taking naps during the day. Some of the most top achievers swear by naps during the day. Whatever your thing is, whatever you need to do. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I'm in college trying to do mission and think busy is cute. I'm telling y'all, it's, 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 it's real. The struggle is real. We, we do that as women. I'm not sure what that's about. I'm, I'm going to ask God for more revelation around what that is really about. But w if you know that that is you, I think one of the things is, again, is we mystify things. Like I was talking about faith the other night. We mystify change. And change is very practical. If you want to change something in your life, do something different. I'm going to say that again. If you want to make a change in your life, how do you do that? You do the opposite of what you were doing before. So it's not this mystical thing. And I don't want to oversimplify change. But a lot of times we make it harder than it has to be to justify us not changing. We make it harder than it has to be to have an excuse to not change. But if you want to change, the first step to doing that is to make up in your mind that you are going to do things a different way, that there is another way of doing things. That is how you start to change. Yes, it is step by step, day by day. It's the daily decisions that you make that determine your destiny each and every day. I preach that all the time. But you've got to say, I'm going to do life another way. There has to be something. Do you really think, do you really think God gets glory out of you being stressed out, overwhelmed, overcommitted, underproductive, so-called multitasking where you're really not getting, do you really think God gets glory out of that? That's not bringing God any glory because you're not being as effective as you could be if you got focused. If you really got focused and moved some of this stuff out of your life that's not serving you, whether that's a relationship, again, some of those things need to move, have first and last names that are sucking your emotional energy, um, you know, all those things. If we move some of those things out of the way, we could really focus. And God is not getting... God is not, how do you de, how do we focus? How do you declutter? That's how you do it. You have to evaluate. You it's gonna take some time for you to sit and really look at what all you have going on. What is in your life that needs to needs to change? Is it stuff around your job? Is it stuff around, you know, again, I think one of the first things to decluttering and seeing what needs to go for right now, because it's not always that everything has to go, period, and you'll never be able to revisit it or never be able to do it or be involved with different things. That's not what I'm saying, because you absolutely can. But the first way to see what needs to go is to ask God and to really look at what season of life are you in right now? What season of life are you in right now? If you are a single woman um, versus a married woman, you're in a different season of life than, than a married woman. So if you're married or you have small kids, you may not be able to travel the world and speak because you have small kids. Now, you could. I mean, you could, but it's definitely going to be more difficult. So what season are you in? Are you in a season where you can... You know, devote more time to your school, your studies versus something else. I mean, you got to see what season you're in. That's one of the first steps to start to take out things that don't really fit with whatever season you're in. So because I see that, especially with women that are married, um, they try to cram things in and they find themselves overwhelmed because they're trying to do things that 
that were they could do in a single season and they have not moved with God into the new season that they are in. And so things are harder. Things become harder when you do not move. Um, and that's going to come through prayer. It's going to come through prayer and you just being honest with yourself and looking at really where you are. Looking at where you are. I can't, you know, say that there's a, a, a formula to determine your season. Again, it's going to take time spending with God, being in his word, and really just being honest with yourself. So if you are in a single season where you, you know, then you do have more time because you have that, what Paul says, that undivided devotion versus when you're married. And, and single and married are not the only seasons that you can be in. For example, last year, my dad uh, got, my dad passed away last year, but before he passed away, he was, uh, he got, he had a major stroke, which caused him to be in intensive care and hospice and intensive care and all that stuff. So I was in a different season of my life. A lot of the things that I was involved with, I had to put on hold because I was now in another season. I was in a season to where I had to care for my dad. We had to, you know, spend nights and weeks and months at the hospital. I was not at home as much. So I was in a different season. I could not do all the things that I could normally do when he was not in the hospital and sick. So it's not just single or married or they're not the only seasons that a person can have. But you've got to be honest with yourself um, and ask God to show you as far as what you need to let go. Because I can't tell you that. I can't say, you know, if you do this, then that. Or, you know, if you meet these requirements, then, hey, you're in this season. Or if you meet these requirements on this checklist, you're in this season. You've got to really ask God and take some time to sit with him. And that's why it's so important that you practice the presence of God and really become aware. And I think sometimes we, and, and I, I want to say this right I think it's not so much because one thing I hear people do, especially in praise and worship leaders, they were like, wow, they really ushered the presence of God in. And it's kind of like, no, they didn't. They just made us aware of the presence of God because the presence of God is not something that comes in and out as far as a building or in our room or in our prayer closet or whatever. His presence is always here, but we become aware of it when certain atmospheres are created. Or certain things are will evoke us to become aware of his presence. And so that's why we have to practice the presence of God and do everything and live our lives in such a way that we are always aware that we are in the presence of God. We are in the presence of God. It's not that we can usher him in and out of a church building because that's his house. <laughs> so, yeah, we're we're the visitors like we're the guests. So we don't usher him in and out of a building, his spirit in and out of a building. His spirit is always there, but we become aware of his presence when we enter into worship or when we enter into prayer or we enter into receiving the word of God. So that's what I want you guys to do. Practice being in the presence of God, keeping that awareness that whatever you do, God is watching. That's number one. God is always aware of us. But are we always aware of him? So in order to do that, it's going to take you really getting serious. And that's why I brought back up the Periscope Prayer Challenge, which if you have no idea what that is, it is my challenge to you and my challenge to myself to... Um, Pray at least one hour a day, whether that is um, laying out before God, praying, just praying, reading your word, sitting in his presence, listening and, and waiting and allowing him to download whatever strategy or whatever wisdom that you need, however that is, but to spend at least an hour with him. And I know you're saying an hour is a lot of time. Number one, no, it's not because... I know some people that have spent an hour searching for Pokemon and walking all down the blocks and hopping fences trying to get Pokemon. You spend hours doing that. I know people that spend hours on the telephone talking to friends, hours on social media, scrolling their timelines, hours looking through email, hours just sitting, letting our minds wander. You've got an hour, my friend. 
So that is my challenge to you, whether that's 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, 10 minutes, six times a day. However, you got to get it in. You've got to make that a daily habit because when you do not, I'm telling you, if that's like a that's like a, 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 a electronics in the kitchen. If my microwave, if I have a microwave um, and it's it's not plugged into the to the power source, I don't care how much I punch that on button. It is not coming on. It is not coming on because it is not connected to the source of power. So sometimes when we feel ourselves stressed and worn down and burned out and empty, are you connected to the power source? Because sometimes we're trying to pour from an empty cup and you cannot pour out anything when you are empty. You cannot, you cannot do what you were created to do. That microwave, it was created to heat things up. When it is doing what it was purposed and created to do by its creator, it is purposed to do to perform a certain function. But if it is not plugged into the source, it will not be, I don't care how many times you click the on button, it's just not going to happen. And that's the same thing with us. We were created to do something. God created each of us to do that. But if we are not connected to the source of power, how are you going to have strength to do it? How are you going to have wisdom? How are you going to have direction on what you're supposed to be doing? How are you going to know what season you're in? How are you going to know uh, who to connect with and who not to connect with? How are you going to know what relationships to end in your life that are going that are at a dead end? And how are you going to know what relationships just need some mending, but they are yet divinely orchestrated by God if you're not plugged into the source? You tell me. You tell me, how are you going to know that? And many of us are trying to do these things and we're making, as my bishop preached on Sunday, crazy choices because we are not plugged into the source and we are doing things in our own strength. We are have, getting into relationships without consulting God because we're not praying because we don't have time. Remember, we got Pokemon to catch. All these things going on because we are not connected to the source. We are distracted. We are majoring on the minor stuff in our life and it's time for us to get refocused. And a lot of times God has to allow us to hit rock bottom. If you find yourself on a cycle, if you find yourself with the same type of crazy relationships, with the same type of things happening in your life, you're not learning the lesson. Somewhere you're not getting it. And when you get it, then that lesson will go away. But it's trying to teach you something that you are not getting. If it keeps coming back around to you, if you keep going around that same mountain like the children of Israel, something, something somewhere you're not getting it. And I don't know if it's because you don't want to get it. Because remember what I said the other night, sometimes people like the attention that their brokenness gets them. So many people make excuses not to change. Because they like the attention, they like the affirmation, they like all of that. But if you really are sick and tired of going around the same mountain, you've got to be intentional about change. You've got to be intentional about who you spend your time with. You've got to be intentional about connections and you've got to overall be intentional about your relationship with God. Because when you get your vertical relationship right, meaning your relationship with God right, these horizontal relationships with people... They'll take care of themselves. A lot of us are trying to get relationships with people right, but God is not going to bless anything or any relationship that you put before him. If he's not the head of it and he's not the beginning and the end of it, you can forget about that relationship being blessed. You're just spinning your wheels. It just is what it is. God is a jealous God and he's not going to bless anything that exalts itself above him. And if you've made your relationship an idol, if you've made your job an idol, if you've made your kids an idol, I'm telling you, you don't want to do that. You want to take that down because God will not have anything exalted above him. So, yeah. So guys, are you distracted? If you know you are distracted, you need to figure out what, what is distracting me. You know what's distracting you. You know what's distracting you, y'all. We are very bright. And a lot of times we, we honestly, we play crazy 
because a lot of times we don't want to give up what it's going to take for us to truly be obedient. Our flesh, and not that we don't want to give, our flesh does not want to give it up. It's our flesh and our spirit are constant. That's what the Bible says. They are constantly in battle. Warring for your soul, that's what the Bible says. They are constantly in battle. But if you want to be better and if you want to be used by God and if you want to be effective, you have got to make change in areas that you need change in a priority. And sometimes that means you got to cut a whole lot of stuff out. You got to call up a whole lot of people and be like, you know, look, I said I, I really did think I was going to be able to do that. But I've had some things to go up and I've had go on and had some transitions and I'm not going to be able to do that. It might be hard and they might be disappointed. But you know what? Life is still going to go on and they're going to be OK. And number one, you're going to be OK. You are going to be OK. And you are the priority because if you don't take care of you, you can't expect nobody else to take care of you. And nobody's going to treat you better than you treat you. So if you allow yourself to be run down and you run yourself raggedy, don't you think other people are going to be like, going to run you raggedy and going to use you? Whatever you tolerate is what's going to go on. Whatever you allow people to do to you, that's what's, what's going to go on. You're going to even, some people have a reputation some people have a reputation to where people know oh, you can call her, she'll do it. But what about letting go of people you may care for but feel they may be a distraction? You have to understand people can be a distraction to your destiny. Especially if the people that you're referring to are causing you to compromise with what God is saying to do. If people are causing you to compromise as far as the reason that you feel like they are a distraction, uh, because anybody that adds value to you is not necessarily a distraction. And anybody that means you well is not going to want to see you distracted from your purpose and is not going to see you want to see you in bad standing with God, so to speak, by even causing you to engage in anything that's going to put a wedge between you and your relationship with God. That's anybody that truly is adding value to your life. But if you know that it's a person that you need to let go of because they are distraction, what distraction means in your life is going to be different from another person's. But if you know that they are distracting you and causing you to compromise above all, then they need to go. I say let them know, you know, depending on what it is, if it's a relationship, whatever it is, I don't know the situation, I don't have to know. But I'm saying... If they are causing you to be distracted and causing you to fall short and they are assisting you with falling short of what God wants you to do, then nip. Cut, cut it. Nip. Bye, Felicia. Exactly. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. If they are causing you to fall short and they are assisting you with doing that and they have no problem and they don't see a problem with it, cut it cut because at the end of the day you do not answer to them you answer to God for your actions and God is not going to want to God is not going to let you toss the blame for what you did and didn't do off on anybody else you answer for your own works you answer for that and sometimes we just have to stand up to people that are not good for us and cut it period Sometimes you got to go cold turkey. Bye. Sometimes you have to go cold turkey. But at the end of the day, who are you trying to please? That person or God? Who are you trying to please? You trying to make them happy? Or are you trying to make God happy with your life so that God can bless your life? So that God can bless your life. What if they don't know they are causing you to be distracted? What if they don't know they are causing you to be distracted? Uh, you to be distracted, then you let them know. You may let them know. I mean, I say you pray for God to give you the words. You don't want to hurt anybody. Like I said, I don't know the situation. Some people might need their feelings hurt. Some people might need to just have it straight. Like, look, this is what it is. But you pray for God to show you how to do it. But if that person doesn't know that they are being a distraction to you, and they may not know if they are being a distraction to you, but number one is the person, if we're talking about a relationship as far as a boyfriend, girlfriend, or dating relationship, if they are not spiritually in tune 
with you and y'all are unequally yoked, then yeah, it's it's just it's eventually going to disintegrate on its own. And so wouldn't it be wiser for you, like the Bible says, to humble yourself? That means you have control over humbling yourself. The Bible's not going to command you to do anything that you can't do. So if, if the Bible says humble yourself, seek God's face, then if we know these things, regardless if they know it or not, it's your responsibility to let them know. You control your life. You control who comes in. You control who comes out. You control who you entertain. You control who you spend your time with. And that's the thing about time. When you spend time with somebody or you waste time or you invest your emotions and your energy into somebody, you cannot get that back. And so if you are spiritually in tune and you know that this person is a distraction, whether they know they are a distraction or not, wisdom to me says to cut it off. Because I'm telling you, God has invested too much into you to let you keep going the wrong way. I think that's why he convicts us. He convicts us, not condemn us, but convicts us. When we are going in the wrong direction or we are entertaining things that are taking us in the wrong direction, he convicts us because he has invested too much into us to allow us to keep going in the wrong direction. Now, if you choose to keep going after, if you choose to keep contending with God for something, God is a gentleman. And we also have his, a, a permissive will that God will allow it, but it's not because it's, it's his best that he has for you, but he will allow it if that's what you want. But sometimes he will allow you to have certain things just to show you that number one, he is God. And that there shall be no other thing because a lot of times that's how we end up getting our hearts broken is when we see the signs. And sometimes we think if we ignore the red flags hard enough, they'll go away. But I'm telling you, a person has to want to have a relationship with God for themselves. I don't care how spiritual you are. They have to want to have that for themselves and they cannot have a, a, a relationship with Christ vicariously through you. They have to have their own relationship. And so if you see that, that's the to me, that's a non-negotiable. And it's easier said than done. So please trust me. Trust me. I have I, you know, I have been in some relationships and have even entertained some friendships that I knew from the beginning this is not going anywhere. But I didn't cut it off. And I allowed it to continue. And I regretted it. So some of them regretted it deeply. So when God begins to prick your heart and tell you and the Holy Spirit begins to show you this, this dude is not about anything. This dude is, this is not going anywhere. Cut it off. I mean, who are you trying to please? Who are you trying to please? Because I'm telling you people, as long as you're marching to their drum, They'll like you. They'll love you. As long as you do what they say and do. Or as long as you're doing whatever makes them happy. But I'm telling you. If they are not checking for God. It's nothing for us to talk about. And I'm not saying that everybody that has a relationship with God is compatible with you. But that should be. Because that's a whole different thing. Compatibility verse, versus you know. Their relationship with God. But that should be the number one thing. Because if you don't have that foundation. And that in common. It's just not going to. It's You're going to always. I am. I'll, I'll definitely teach on that Rachel. Um, you're going to always. Somewhere. You're going to butt heads. Because two cannot walk together. Unless they agree. Two cannot walk together unless they agree. Your, your whole worldview is different from somebody that is not a believer. That has not made God the Lord, or Jesus the Lord of their life. Their Lord and Savior. Some people have gotten saved and gotten baptized, but Jesus is still not Lord of their life. He is not, he is not the, the beginning and the end of their life. They are not consulting. You can go stand in front of the church and 
fill out the card and do all that stuff and get saved and confess and do that. And, and you know, I don't know what, I'm not trying to debate any theology about salvation. But again, Jesus is not Lord of their life. So if Jesus is not Lord and Savior, again, that should be the first non-negotiable period. But again, that's not going to say that just because they are saved and they do have a relationship with God that you are compatible with that person. So there are other steps after that um, that you need to look at to make sure that somebody you are compatible with, with somebody for sure. So, um, yeah, how do we get on relationships? <laughs> We're supposed to be talking about Mary and Martha. And now we all over here, over in the, in the, uh, on relationships. And Jay, I'm 40 minutes in to a quick scope. <laughs> yes, he did. He did. Yeah, he did. So, uh, but that's how God works. I got distracted. Emily, you know what? <laughs> you know what? You gonna quit. You gonna quit in the comment. You showing out in the comment section. Emily is showing out in the comment section. But you guys, so that's that's kind of what I wanted to. I, well, we wrapped it all up in there. We wrapped it all up in there, y'all. So I am. I know God is pleased, but I really want you guys to definitely. And I'm gonna wrap it up because I gotta get get a, get a few other things done tonight before I lay my head down on the pillow. But I wanted to drop in today because I had not had a chance to scope all day. Uh, thank you. I had not had a chance to scope today because it was so rainy and just stuff was just kind of moving slow and all that stuff. So I said, I got to hop on tonight. Uh, stop putting God on the time limit. <laughs> God said, you're not going to put me on no clock. <laughs> you won't put me on the clock. We'll see. We'll see who's running this. So yeah, guys. Um, but if you have not, uh, ordered, if you have not ordered, pre-ordered, because we're going to wrap it up by either tomorrow. We were going to do it today, but we decided to open, keep it open probably till Friday. If you have not, uh, hey, Brittany. Hey, which Brittany? Oh, no, not the Brittany. I was about to say she spells our name different. So, Brittany, your name is Brittany. Is this your first time tuning in, Brittany? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Well, I'm glad you tuned in. And you guys share this Periscope. Share my YouTube channel. I always upload all of my old Periscopes to my YouTube channel underneath my Periscope vault. But to quickly access it, you can download my app, which is not under my name. It is called the Emerge Online Devotional App. And it has all my videos. It has music. It, you get inspirational devotionals every other day. Then, then the other day, um, each like every other day, I send either a devotional or an inspirational downloadable timeline graphic. Um, oh, yay. Yay, yay, yay. So you can download that. It's a free app, y'all. So you got nothing to lose except a few seconds to go download it. So, yeah, type in Emerge Online Devotional app. Purple is it. I love purple. Don't you love purple? I love purple. So, yeah, um, download that app, and you can stay connected with everything we do. And you can also pre-order your My To Achieve journal, y'all. Y'all do not want to not have this particular journal. So, please go uh, pre-order. It's just 20 bucks. 20 bucks is not a lot. Um for you know for a resource like this again we can spend twenty dollars at chick-fil-a or starbucks y'all come on we can spend twenty dollars real quick so why not you know invest twenty dollars into something that's really going to help you move forward and it's cute i mean seriously it's cute so <laughs> yeah so y'all get it ordered but um i um your cute makes it all <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. So they will ship, the journals actually will ship at the beginning of September. The journals will actually ship at the beginning of September. Um, and so, yeah, I want you guys to go ahead and pre-order because we're not going to make it available again. Uh, we're not going to make it available again until the fall. <laughs> Emily, you are on the edge for real. You are on the edge. But all right, guys, I want to pray with y'all real quick before I go. I want to pray with y'all real quick before I go. If you have a prayer request, please drop it in the chat box. Dear God, we thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for this day that was not promised to us. We ask that you first forgive us from our sins of anything we've said, done, or thought that was not pleasing in your sight, God. And we ask that you just 
take what was said on tonight, your words spoken through me, God, and impart it into our hearts and embed it into our hearts and into our minds, God, that we would want to be more like you, that we would want to have lives that are pleasing to you, that we would want to engage in relationships that are pleasing to you, God. And God, we thank you so much for what you're going to do and how you're going to do it in our life, God. Even though we may not see it right now, it doesn't look like it, but we thank you so much for what you are doing behind the scenes. And we thank you so much, even though some of us are have some really dark nights going on in our life right now we don't understand it and we are in a midnight season of our life but God we thank you because we know that you work the night shift God you work the night shift so anything that's going on it seems like it's so dark God we know that you are working we know that you are in there making this thing work together everything is working even the bad things are working in tandem for our good and even when it doesn't feel like it we can still have joy. Even when it doesn't feel like it, we can still have peace because we are standing on what your word declares. We are blocking out the negative voices. We are blocking out anyone and we are cutting off anything that tries to tell us anything other than what your word declares for our life, God. In the name of Jesus, God, we declare healing. We speak peace. We speak joy. We speak focus. We speak direction. We speak redirection, God. We speak provision for our dreams. We speak courage to take the steps that we need to in order to achieve our dreams. Whatever it is, God, I don't know, but you know what we need. Each and every one of us, God, because you love us that much. And we thank you so much for the purpose that you placed inside of us, God. You don't make spare people. You do not make spare people. So that means each and every person that is here, no matter what they've been through, no matter what mistakes they've made, no matter what they've had to overcome, they have a purpose. You have a purpose. There is something here for you to do. And God, I'm asking God that you give them um, the desire and the focus to tune into you each and every day to figure out what that purpose is, what that thing is that they are supposed to do, God. They can only figure that out by convening with you each and every day, getting in your face, getting in your presence, practicing your presence, God. Help us to be more aware of your presence, God, that you are always there. We don't have to usher you in. We don't have to invite you in. You're already in. Help us be aware of that, God. And help us to act like we are in your presence at all times, God. And we thank you so much, God. Believing it is done through faith in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, guys. Peace out. I will holler at y'all tomorrow. And um, oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Love you too, sis. Yeah, so if you, and again, that to sign up for that email list. Thank you, Emily, and that just reminded me. To sign up for the email list, you need to go to bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash Periscope Prayer Challenge and uh, enter your name and email and confirm that you want to be on the list and you are in there. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'll holler at y'all tomorrow. Have a good night.